Okay, so what's on the exam for 2023? Uh, using the same method as always, I'm using experimental probability, so I'm going to add up all the questions from uh, according to the syllabus from what I've done in the past, and I'll ignore the multiple choice questions because they're fairly easy. So as you can see here, uh, this is the 2022 paper. Uh, take this with a little bit of grain of salt because um, I just, some of them overlap uh, where I can put them in uh, to which category strictly. Uh, also my adding is not that great, I'm one or two points off uh, most of the time. Um, not worth really double checking that because they are just general, uh, put to general categories. Uh, so the totals are here. Uh, this time I've um, highlighted anything six percent of the exam or above. So uh, for those questions there, there's usually about uh, fifty-six percent of the exam, uh, and you can see from the previous year there is not a lot of change. Sometimes uh, almost nothing. Uh, so the biggest one here was, was uh, there was a big macro and molecules question this time around, um, and so that was quite a large uh, portion. That was a two percent uh, part of the exam. So as I said, there is uh, starting to be some consistency across the um, types of questions that are going to be asked. Um, so just make sure you're um, good with your, your uh, PKA questions. Uh, you can do mass gas uh, solution stoichiometry because that occurs elsewhere as well. So that does actually add up to six, more than 6% as well as in other places. Um, what else is here? There's balancing redox, touch and go. That wasn't asked last year really. Um, EMFs, always a lot of galvanic electrolytic cells. Um, always make sure you know your reaction pathway summary sheet. I'll show you these in a second on the website. Um, and you're going to have to do a bit of memorization. Uh, make sure you know the how to name uh, and the structure and function of the large biomolecules. All right. Uh, so moving back then, the main concern. So I've done my annual review. Um, usually update the PowerPoints based on the mark scheme. So just here, uses correct substitution. So if you don't do the formula, uh, then you won't, uh, and then substitute, you won't, you need to have those two steps. I always say formula substitute units, even though units won't uh, count, sometimes they will, you just, you don't take the risk. Um, if you don't do the formula and then the substitution as well, so you can link the two together, uh, you won't get that mark. And there's a couple other places in the mark scheme. So just to reinforce uh, formula substitute units, It'll cover you to get the correct uh, calculations uh, for the whole exam, uh, hopefully. And we'll move on to the things that are a little bit more concerned, uh, such as question 24. Uh, it says platinum and copper, platinum and copper, but it's it's actually iron and copper. So I'm not so worried about the huge errors uh, in uh, questions or mark schemes because they'll usually get picked up. I'm a little bit more worried about the subtle, uh, the subtleties. Uh, and so that would take me to uh, paper two. First of all, 5B. Um, in this particular one, the, the syllabus does talk about um, uh, various reactions, uh, halogens, um, whether the, there's a high concentration or low concentration, so usually above one or below one uh, significantly, uh, will alter whether you get uh, what ions you get and what reactions occur. So this they've sort of asked for that to be applied in other situations with the zinc. Um, so just be aware if something's worth, if I go to question 5B, uh, here it says uh, if the copper, if there's blah, 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 uh, and then it's four marks. Um, so they're the scariest ones, the written questions with four marks. I'm hoping my students will have uh, eight points put down there. Uh, and not four. All right, so that's the only real way. Um, I've gone and called it God mode. All right, so um, the worded responses are the scariest. You really have to um, kind of predict that maybe the question could be incorrect or the answer could be incorrect uh, and try and cover yourself for that. So this is where we're dealing with uh, God mode here. Uh, and so when the mark scheme, the mark scheme I'm okay with, silver won't react, won't go into solution, uh, it'll be at the bottom, uh, but then it says the zinc, uh, well, it's going to form and it could form, but if it's uh, low enough, it's not going to be uh, an issue, but if it's a high concentration, you will get zinc on the other side. Um, so that one uh, really is requiring a lot uh, to over answer, so um, I would speak more about anything you possibly can. Uh, anything that's three or four marks for a worded question is red flag. 
Um, the other one that's a little bit more concerning uh, is this one here. Again, a three, four mark question. Explain why cellulose is harder to convert to glucose and starch. Be a lot more comfortable if it was just two marks. Um, if you look at the mark scheme, it says identify cellulose as a linear polymer. I'm, I'm happy that the monomers pack closely together and there's increasing hydrogen bonding. Um, but if you look at your um, syllabus, it doesn't really talk about linear and branch polymers. It's a differentiation between these uh, complex star complex carbohydrates. Um, the Pearson that the Pearson one here says it's uh, what is it here? Uh, the Pearson says unbranched, uh, and I think or and the Oxford goes for straight chain. So neither of them use that terminology. It could be the other way around, um, but. Um, if you have memorized and over answered, this is my PowerPoint here for it. Um, I've added linear and branched, so I've updated my PowerPoints now. But if you have talked about, um, there is the word branching in there, there is the word um, hydrogen bonding insoluble linking. Um, if you have over answered it, you are fine. If you don't notice that starch is both branched, linked, uh, sorry, uh, linear and branched. Um, and so the mark scheme also is inconsistent because the question has asked for starch, which is amylose and amylopectin. So I'm hoping my uh, students would have talked about amylose, you know, and then amylopectin, and that one's got branches, and that one's easier, and less internal hydrogen bonding, so the enzymes can't get in to react. Um, probably like 10 marks here. Um, I would expect if you're answering that one properly, and that would have covered you as well. So there are issues with that. Um, they really should have compared glycogen uh, to make a lot more sense rather than starch, which is a bit of a messy one. Um, and so just going back to the PowerPoint, you've got to over answer. It's the only way. Um, if, the, if you can say 10 points, like in that one, we'll say 10 points. Um, if you can't, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, the third mark is something that's so obvious you wouldn't think of saying it. Uh, so start saying obvious things as well. Um, so you need to be quick and fluent and ready because uh, if you're going to go for 100%, uh, it's going to require God mode. If you're going for just a pass, well, that's quite easy. Uh, you can see I've, I've marked out uh, in the Excel spreadsheet here uh, where most of the marks are going to be, uh, which takes me to the extra resources. So if you want to support me, uh, and go to my website, there are plenty of quick and easy ways to get ready for the exam. I've got uh, the main question types here with answers. Um, the answers are here. Um, I've got the data test, which is perfect data test preparation because that'll cover all of Unit 3, the main types of questions you can ask for Unit 3. Uh, having that memorized and of course these notes, uh, although they're cross-referenced with all the textbooks, it really is cross-referencing with the mark schemes so that puts them on a different level um, to make them a lot better. Uh, and then uh, just uh, a word uh, to, for teachers just to continue doing complex unfamiliar questions in class because um, I think that zinc question really uh, required uh, teachers to be con constantly uh, pushing their students to think of things, uh, th think outside the box in new situations. All right, um, and that will hopefully be um, sufficient to get you 100, I hope. All the best, um, and I'll see you later.